Spirit. The Lord be with you. Sisters and brothers, wherever we are, wherever we happen to be, we are bound together in the Holy Spirit. We are bound together in our worship together. And so we take a moment as we begin and remind ourselves of that fact, that we all worship together. We also take a moment to remind ourselves that we are deeply dependent on the love and mercy of God. God has, sh has shown us that mercy in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we cry out to God for God's mercy, God's pardon, and God's peace. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did. For through the healing paschal remedies, you have conformed us to his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia came forward and debated with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, we have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him, seized him and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified, this man never stopped saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus the Nazarene will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove me from the way of falsehood and favor me with your law, the way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Wonders not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread, when Jesus gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. 
do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a lot of very practical wisdom that applies to a lot of many different parts of our lives about taking really big things and breaking them down into the things that we actually control, or taking big tasks and breaking them down into the things that we can do manageably one step at a time. Part of my work when I was a teacher or a high school coach is taking something big, like a big course or an end-of-the-year assignment or something like that, and breaking it down into manageable parts so that the students could focus not on the overwhelming nature of the huge task that they didn't control, but on little things that they could do a little bit at a time, things that they could control. Jesus shows a little bit of that balance, or balance something like that here in this passage. The disciples, rightly having seen great signs of what God is doing in the feeding of the 5,000, are eager to wrap their mind around what it is exactly that God is doing. And what's important is that Jesus doesn't say, you're not a part of that, don't worry about it. Jesus says, Jesus indicates that they are a part of it, but they have a very specific role to play. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with the big picture of feeding 5,000 all at once, but has to do with something that they actually control. Jesus says, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. This is something important for us to cultivate as believers, too. We get the privilege of participating in the big work of God in so many ways, whether it's literally like feeding many people, just like happens in the scriptures. But it also indicates in the ways that we support people who need it, reach out to people who are lonely, participate in announcing good news by the way that we live our faith, by the conversations that we have with people. Stretch out the examples as far as you want and apply it to your own life. We all have a specific call to participate in the great big work of God. But we also are responsible for something that's much closer to us, something that we control much more, which is what our relationship with God is. We control the kind of energy that we pour into our relationship with God. We control the way that we devote ourselves to that relationship. We put ourselves in positions that we can believe more deeply. We put ourselves in positions to get resources and take advantages of opportunities to feed our faith. We control that. God figures out in the long run how to take what it is, that belief that we've cultivated, and put it at service of God's work in the world. So today, let's do two things. Let's let ourselves, on the one hand, be amazed by the bigness of God's work in the world. It is big, it is amazing, and great things are happening. But let's also be attentive to the thing that we have the most control over, which is the way that we believe. How can we continue to feed that belief? How can we continue to feed that relationship with God? And can we trust just a little bit more deeply today that when we believe more deeply, when we feed that belief, God is going to take it and put it at the service of something much bigger? Together, let's offer our prayers to our loving God. We pray for the holy people of God everywhere. We pray for this holy people of God who are praying with this Mass. We pray that all of us might have the energy to believe a little bit more deeply today, and that we might trust more deeply that God will put it at service with the, of the works of God. We pray to the Lord. Pray for the church and all the many different people who have leadership roles in the church for Pope Francis, for the bishops, for pastors, lay leaders, community leaders, lay ministers, teachers, catechists, all the many different kinds of leaders in the church, and especially at this time as they seek to bring comfort to God's people, we pray to the Lord. We pray for civic leaders and leaders of nations, that they may be given the gift of wisdom and that they may be motivated by a pursuit of the common good. We pray to the Lord. 
Pray for all the many people who labor for the common good, especially for the health of everyone. We pray for doctors and nurses, other healthcare professionals. We pray for public health officials. We pray for researchers. We pray for all the many people who are working for the good of God's people, especially in public health. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the many people who have most need of our prayers. We pray for the homeless and the hungry, the sick, the suffering, the dying, the incarcerated, the homebound, refugees, migrants. We pray especially for those who are unemployed and underemployed at this time. We pray to the Lord. We pray for whom this Mass is offered, for Marles Muno, for Jean Bennett, Barnett, and for Martin Lee. We pray to the Lord. And wherever we are, wherever we happen to be, in silence, let's take a moment and lift up our own prayers. We lift up our own needs, the needs among our family and friends, and the needs of the world that lie in our hearts at this time. We pray to the Lord. To you, O God, we lift our prayers. We lift them with great confidence and great hope, for we lift them in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Please pray, sisters and brothers, that these gifts, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, together we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always kept free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faithfulness of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Wherever you are, wherever you happen to be, take a moment and offer one another a sign of peace. Peace in your hearts, peace in your prayers, peace to the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. As we receive communion, we remind ourselves of the fact that we are all bound together in Christ, that we are parts of the body of Christ and cannot be separated from Christ. We're parts of one another and cannot be separated from one another. So as we make a prayer of spiritual communion, as we join ourselves to this Mass, until the day we can be together physically, we remind ourselves that nothing can separate us from Christ and therefore nothing can separate us from one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed, how happy are we to be called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go and announce good news with your lives. <laughs>